Hello, friends, and welcome to Rise Up in Real Estate, where we are on a quest. We are looking for the extra in the ordinary. And I'm Tad Fulford, and I will be your host on this journey, where we will take an honest look at what makes ordinary people extraordinary. Exactly how can we be extra in our personal and our professional lives? In this season of the Rise Up in Real Estate Adventure, there will be a monthly rhythm, meaning each month we will have four unique episodes. In one episode, we'll tackle a pressing current real estate industry thought. In another, we will chat with a local difference maker in the real estate space. For our third episode, we will host a respected national thought leader. And finally, we will have a fourth bonus and surprise episode. And in each episode, we will be digging into not only what those people think, but who those people are. Along the way, it's my hope that you'll laugh some, you'll be challenged some, you will get inspired some, and if we are lucky, maybe even figure out a way or two, you can rise up in your own life and be the best human that you can be. So the challenge is, let's all... Rise up. Rise up, nation. Welcome back. We're excited to have you here for Rise Up in Real Estate. And today, I know I've said this before, but I mean it genuinely. I've got two of my favorite people. This is kind of where it all started for me in real estate. I've got my two really good buddies. They are with Living South Realty now. They'll talk about that later on a little bit. But I want you guys to give them a a warm welcome to Rise Up in Real Estate, Graham Nelson and Matt Gangra. Glad to have you guys on the show today. We appreciate you, Ted. Thank you. Yes. Thankful to be here. Yeah, this is good. So we we go back a little ways. Um, How many years ago was that when we we started that old... The the three of us were responsible for selling a lot of lots at Plantation Lakes in the beginning. We were a coastal region of South Carolina, for those of you that are out, out of this area. But when was that when we started? Do you guys remember? Uh, well, Graham started around 2000. 2001. October 2001 was when the first home sites were sold yeah. in Plantation Lakes. And then I joined around 2003, about 20 years ago, and then you shortly after. Amazing. We were, well, I wasn't that young 20 years ago, but we were just, I was brand new to real estate right out of being a golf pro and didn't know a thing, getting out of a marriage. It was Fun. Well, it was funny because yeah, whenever, fun. <laughs> whenever I uh, got out of real estate school, of course, I was going by the office there trying to get a job. And go, I kept on running into Graham, who didn't know me. And, uh, of course, the answer was, no, we're not hiring. We're not hiring. We're not hiring. <laughs> I was working the front desk. I was trying to get a yeah. hold of Joey, the broker. You right. know, But uh, it, for some reason, Graham was the gatekeeper. And so, um, you know, finally I got through. Joey got, I got an interview with Joey and the rest is history. But, but not too long after that. You were the new guy. Right. Yep. I remember that. And and I bet you Graham was the one that picked his location at that front desk. No one assigned him there. He became the oh, game he was a, on yes, purpose. Exactly right. And what do you Matt, what do you remember most about Graham back in the day? Like I still tell stories about you to this is the very day, Graham, but what was his secret sauce selling back in the day? Do you remember? I don't know. He was like the young kid. Yep. You know, he was definitely the young kid. He could get away with anything. I remember we had a grand opening one time and you could not be late for these morning meetings Absolutely before a grand not. opening. Well, here comes Graham about 15, 20 minutes late. Just, you know, his eyes are, you could just tell he had a long night the night before. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, every, like the bosses were all looking at each other and they kind of just gave a nod like, all right, we're going to let this slide because, uh, you know, it was Graham. He was the kid. Yeah, yes. he, could, he could become everyone's kid brother, son. You just could mix into any family that came in the front door. I remember mm-hmm. that like yesterday. Everybody and and everybody's guard was totally down. Okay. I remember we had a couple of guys like me that were a little older, and even like Jack, yeah, back then that they didn't trust us at first. It was mm-hmm. like no way. But when they sat with Graham, they're like, "We'll take it. We'll That's take exactly whatever it is right. you yes. sell. We'll take it." Yeah. A shout out to Joey Bren who yes. gave us all an incredible opportunity back then. We were even talking about Gary mm-hmm. Ingersoll and Dave Plummer, Mark McDonald, all those guys. So. If they happen to listen to this, we have much love for you guys um, for giving us chances back then. We were just talking a few minutes ago, like you told us, it would never be like that again. And here we are. Here we are 20-something 20, 20 years later, right? That's amazing. Yeah. And we kept waiting for it to get back like it was, you know, yeah. as far as a lot land sales. And uh, I think that was a once-in-a-lifetime. 
Yeah, now that you think, I don't even think anybody's done anything like that at all. They don't even try it today, do they? I, no, I think, independent. Like it's a lot of the custom home neighborhood like that doesn't happen. I mean, builders will do it, but no. I mean, I think the stars kind of lined up um, yeah. for that situation at that point in time. None of the big corporate builders were here. I mean, a few of them were kind of inching their way into the the area, so it left room for um, you know some of these smaller developers to buy tracts of land and um, just do something unique. You know, and if you look at Plantation Lakes and Cypress River and even Wild Wing Plantation. Yep. I just don't think there'll ever be, at least here in this uh, this county, there'll ever be an opportunity like uh, like those communities presented. Yep. So I know those guys have been waiting 25 years to hear this. You were right. <laughs> they were right. They were right. I had to go back and tell my mom and dad the same thing when I got a little older. They told me all these things when I was a kid, and I'm like, you're crazy. But then That's I told right. them, you're right. Um, but I genuinely do have uh, just the utmost respect. The three of us joke around a bunch, and we you know, we rib each other. But I have the most respect for you guys as human beings and um, the impact you've made in this marketplace. You've got amazing families. I want to talk a little bit about your families. Just introduce me to... Graham, let's start with you. Tell me about your your beautiful family. You're a grandpa now, right? I am. Yes, that's why you got that beard. The beard's got a little gray in it. it I love it. It does. It does. So a lot has changed over the past twenty plus years. Uh, I have four kids. Uh, Carson's my daughter. She's twenty two years old. Jonah just turned twenty one. Jackson just graduated high schools, uh, going into the Air Force. He just, you know, he's eighteen. And then Brooks started his first day of high school at wow. Carolina Forest High School. So uh, a lot's changed, uh, and it, with our life, with you know most of the kids really moving on and moving out of the house, and yeah. and then Carson uh, has given us uh, one grandbaby so far, uh, baby Zoe, and she's just just like what everybody says. I mean, these grandbabies are special and they're different it's a different type of feeling than even with your own kids yeah. and it's 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 good with your kids and it, it, yeah. i didn't think it could get better but with these grandbabies it's even better yeah you know? it's amazing when i remember before i had my first daughter which her birthday's today actually uh she turned 28 i took her to lunch today wow. <clears throat> and i remember when uh, my ex was pregnant with her i was people told me you'll never you won't understand the love until she's born and when she was born, I was like, you're exactly right. I yes. know, Matt, you've got some kids too. But when then I hear the same thing about grandbabies. But I also yeah. hear you don't have to keep them either. You can send them back home. Yes. Like you don't have to worry so much about the night times and they're, when they're sick and all that. So mm-hmm. that's amazing. I mean, I, I it's just cool to see young men like us growing up. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably there were times in that trailer back at Plantation Lakes, if we were honest, that we're sitting around those round tables and we were looking at each other going, we might not all make it. <laughs> the, way we were, yeah. the way we were living and the things we were doing. And, and now here we are. I mean, you guys tell me about your family, Matt. You've got, you, you just kind of went back again and had another baby, didn't you? Yeah. It's a surprise baby, you know? So uh, I got an 18 year old, 21 year old and a three year old. Wow. Yeah. And just whenever you think, whenever Join I was, the club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know, just when I thought, you know, we were probably, you know, maybe looking at downsizing, maybe selling the home, getting something one level, you know, uh, surprise starting all over, but I wouldn't change it for the world. She's, she's, she's something special. So you got your two boys early, right? And then, and then your, your wife fooled you into thinking y'all were done. Right. Cause she wanted that girl. So 16 years later, here she is. Yes, exactly. What's, right. what's your daughter's name? Morgan. Morgan, that's her, awesome. Her friends call her Mo. Mo, that's awesome. And you got <laughs> yes. a Zoe and a Mo. I mean, this is the yes. cool, this is the cool names club. I love that. It is. And you still live. We're not going to tell your address, but you right. live in one of the neighborhoods we built right that's back right. in the day. We didn't build it, but we yeah we were sold a, sold yeah. a lot of lots. Remember Hilton Head Lakes? Oh Remember yeah, that neighborhood down oh, yeah. there. Remember Which, Osprey Plantation? So yes. If any of our guys are listening to, it, they're probably shaking in their boots yeah. right now. Well, like, you know Hilton Head Lakes is Margaritaville now. I heard that. Yeah. 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 I haven't been down there, but I'd love to visit. Uh, I just, and I, I, we should shout out to Joe Bryn to Mr. Referral Tattoo. Yes. yes. Across the stomach. Yes. Yeah. Where I learned the value. And you know, it's interesting that today that's still the number one thing we, t- we teach at our company here is repeat referral business because it's, it's so important. cheapest. But back then I was like, Joe, quit annoying me about that because they're marketing to all these new people, right? We're yeah. doing these dinner parties. Remember those trips? Oh yes. my gosh, we could reminisce. Yes. Um, but now that repeat, that referral, every time he would come see me at Hilton Head Lakes, he'd say, "Where? tell me about your repeat referral business. I'm like, would you please? 
but now I'm doing the same thing. So thank you, Joe, for that. Um, that is true. And amazing. it's funny you bring that up, Tab, because it's one of the things we talk about every every week. Mm-hmm. We bring up Joe Bryn's name and we say that. I mean, we have built our new, you know, it's a newer real estate company off of referrals. Mm-hmm. And whenever we're even thinking about lead generation, we're, you know, the the least expensive, most return on your investment for a lot of reasons is referrals, is just talking to your property owners that you have done business with, just calling and checking in, saying hello. We've been thinking about you. You know, we we if we have a gap, that's what we're doing. We're picking up the Absolutely. phone. And it is amazing what happens as long as you're top of mind. That's all it is. You know, yeah. you just have to be in their mind because next thing you know, they're going to be talking to a neighbor and real estate's going to come up and they're going to think of you. They're going to be talking to their brother, their sister, their cousin, their coworker, just because you made a five minute phone call. Just to check in. Just right. to check in. You're not even talking about real estate, but it'll come up. They bring it up. They bring it up, but you're not even going in with that expectation then and this fits right into you your your uh, motto tad it's you're just being a good human you're literally right. checking in on them and it pays dividends it i mean it's 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 That's amazing it. it's interesting that you uh you because you're both of you have had a um your growth through real estate has been on site you were at plantation lakes and yep. cypress river and all that and then you worked for a national builder mm-hmm. um, and you were still on site and yet it's probably the last thing on the, maybe, maybe the onsite people are pushing repeat referral, but it seems like they're so focused on the new buyer that they don't. I wonder where you guys learned that from Joe Brin. From That's Joe right. Brin. That's exactly um, right. Yeah. And you're right. Like where we were, cause we were kind of at the, you know, the top of the mountain when it comes to uh, communities. New um, home sales. We call it the pinnacle. It just pinnacle. really couldn't get any better. We were at the top. top. And yeah. honestly was their time. For repeat referral calls, was there? there you was, didn't need. Yeah, yeah there wasn't. There was a line out the door. The location was prime. Of course, the branding and marketing was was bringing people in. Oh yeah, bringing 100%. people in. So you really did not have time or the need right. for uh, really lead gen or yeah. in, in a lot of cases even follow up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there were times they follow. If they wanted to buy, they would follow up with us. I mean, that's how good it was. Yeah, in those situations. Yeah, yeah. But I wonder if we would have asked those questions, probably would have gotten a lot more business. But who needed it? So that's an interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting mindset. And what's, what's interesting is in a lot of these, um, you know, with these big corporate builders, you can't sell as many as you think you can. There's limits. There's caps. Um, so if there's three or four salespeople in, a, in an office, there's a cap to how many you all can sell because you just can't build as many homes as right. you know you, you know, during you know during some markets. You know you'd have to do um, basically reservations. You know, right. put people on a waiting list because you can't build a hundred homes in one month. Right. So, right. Um, you know, as far as prospecting and everything, whenever you're in those those markets like that, you're not really, um, you know, beating the phones. You're kind of just dealing yeah. with what's in front of you. That's why the land sale thing was so genius to me, because there was no limit. Remember right. the opening at Cypress River Plantation? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I think we sold over 300 home sites or something crazy, wasn't we it? We did. It was that wow. weekend. And, and there's people still building on some of those. Yes. They're still vacant. I know Matt Harper, a good friend of ours. Is still killing it down there. You yes, know, um, but that lot, the, that's there was no limit there because it was custom homes, no time frame to build. Remember all that? That'll oh, never yeah, happen again. We sold that community out in one year, twelve months. All yeah. all five hundred and some home sites. Yeah, gone. Yeah, I and mean, there's about five hundred real estate agents that live down there now. So if you're listening to this, you live in Cypress River, go get them. Yeah, that's yes. right. Go get them. It's a um, community. So you guys, tell me about starting this company. Like, when did you? When was day one for? Living South Realty. When did y'all open? So technically, it really wasn't until you left because I left first and kind of you know got boots on the ground and setting up leases and all that good stuff. Yeah, it was so January probably, January twenty twenty two. Yeah, you know, so it's really been a year and a half, mm-hmm. uh, eighteen months, eighteen months. Yeah. So you you guys are responsible for the market changing. 
It's that about when things shifted. Was it 22? It, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, so January 2022. And I know you you were, that's a big step from where you guys were. I mean, you you had, I know there was a lot behind the scenes that people don't recognize, but just looking at it from a an outsider's perspective, you had someone doing marketing for you. You were kind of like a catcher sitting in a, in a bullpen of perfect pitches. Mm-hmm. And I know how well you guys can sell. They were coming in, but I know there was some other stuff going on. But for you to say, I'm going to leave that. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put my flag in the ground and maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Right. That was a big step. Were you all nervous or scared? Or? Yeah. Not only did we leave that, you left, we left a tremendous backlog. Yeah. True. I didn't and, think of that. Yeah, you don't get paid on that when you leave. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, it was a, it was a decision that um, we pondered for months and months and months, but you know, I mean, it just felt like there was more to um, our future or at least mine than, um, doing what I was doing. Right. You know, right. And it's time for a change. Correct. Cause yeah. the, the positives to being with on site and being with a big national builder is exactly what you said, Ted, all the tools, all the marketing, all the support, it is provided for you. Mm-hmm. They set it up. Perfect. Money is no object. If it's going to help produce uh, sales, mm-hmm. right. And make, they just want you selling. They don't want you, you know, building the homes. They don't want you, uh, you know, dealing with customer care and stuff. They really do set Even it up. Even though you end up dealing with customer yeah, you do. Care. Yeah. yeah, you end up, yes. You have but, to. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, and I worked for some smaller builders before where the salesperson was really doing everything. They didn't want the builders, you know, dealing with that. They The, the salesperson was the in-between, but the bigger national builders, uh, they, they have the systems down. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But it was a long-term decision. The challenge with being on site is as soon as the place sells out, you're at the mercy of what's next, what's coming next. If they do not have a place for you, another track of land, a position open for you, then you could go months. You could, We call them gap outs. You could have a four, six, 12-month gap before you could sell something again. And then it's another six to 12 months before you get paid because you don't get paid until the deals are closed. So right. you're, you that don't have certainty. You don't control, you don't, you don't control, control. And you can't do, if you're working with them, you can't say, okay, well I'm going to pause this part. Then I'm going to, you know, go help people buy and sell out in the open market. That doesn't work that way. You know? Right. So you have to sit on standby you have no control. Right. And, right. And, and even with the land business, when that market shifted and, and all of a sudden land and lots weren't selling, we, you yeah. know, what are you going to, you can't shift with the market. You're stuck with this product at this time. Right. And the only way to shift is to change jobs. And, yeah. and, and that's going to happen. The, 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 the lucky new home salespeople that if, you, if you've met some that have been there for years, then it really is that's few and far in between. Right. You know, right. You that's know. interesting. Yeah. What pops in my head when you're talking a lot of things, but this is what led us to timeshare for a minute. Mm. We won't talk about that because mm-hmm. that's cussing in my opinion. <laughs> we won't do that. But uh, it, if I can say it this way, you chose controlled uncertainty yes. over uncontrolled uncertainty 100 percent. yeah i mean yeah. you 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 were going into uh, i mean you cho- you ch- truly chose the entrepreneur path i think you did and you've always done that matt i know mm-hmm. and you followed we've all followed that you just said you know what i'm i don't know what it's going to be but it's going to be i'm going to be making the decisions and i've been successful in the past so let's go do this is that right absolutely 100 yeah. percent. and it's yeah. a long it's the long-term plan we we knew it was going to be taking a step back we knew it was going to be hard. Yeah. And and this is personally the reason I was able to make the decision is because of Matt. You know, we, we know Matt and yep. his, yep. his uh, work ethic and our other partner who's actually uh, the broker of Living mm-hmm. South Realty. Her name is Ivy Ritters. And, and she also worked with us on site. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And, and one thing about Ivy is nationally out of thousands of salespeople. She's good. She was the number yeah. one salesperson in the nation for Pulte Homes for like three years in a row. Right. Yeah. And we should have her on the show. Yeah. I actually, tried. Instead of the two yes. of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. She's flying under the radar doing what she does best. Yeah, yeah. That's she right. had a few things going on. No, today. I love yes. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and uh, with them, both of them came to me and said, this is what we are doing. We would like you to come with us. The timing was not ideal for me. I mean, I had, you know, two kids in college, one about to get into college. and But it was an opportunity I knew I would regret if I did not right. do it, especially with them two. It's yeah. funny he remembers it that way because I remember him and Ivy coming to me. Right. Well, that, I mean, that's the beauty of entrepreneurism. Yeah, you yeah, don't sure. recognize where it comes from. You just yeah. know you got to go do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all yeah. were kind of feeling that same way. Yeah. I actually thought about shutting Remax down and coming to join you guys. Too. Right. I'm so yes. excited. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Mandy, you didn't hear that. Um, no, but that's, I, I love that. Uh, let's go to the battlefield spirit. And you're 18 months in. Tell me the hardest thing so far. If, and you can answer it separately. Maybe you weren't expecting this question, so if it takes a minute, that's okay. But what's been the hardest? I mean, the uh, hardest thing, I think, is, you know, the realization that it's not just sales. I mean, you know, it, in fact, it's a lot, there's a lot less sales going on, you know, in this in this world um, than what we're used to. It's, it's a lot more marketing. It's a lot more uh, beating the phones. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, it's a lot different. You're wearing a lot of different hats, a lot of different Right. That hats. was the number one realization I have. I just could not think that it was going to be this way where this, from where we came from was a sales job. That's it right. really right. was. We right. studied sales. We know sales from beginning to end, mm -hmm. doing it for 20 years. We get into this business and we look at each other and we start this is marketing. This right. is a marketing job because if the customers think of you when it comes to listing their home or choosing you to represent them as a buyer rep, uh, there's not as much sales going on. No. You know, I mean, yes, you have to represent yourself as if you're listing them that you know what you're doing and That's you're the you're best person for the job. And that comes natural to us because we are salespeople. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then on the buying side, that's where we've even found ourselves in situations where we've had to remind ourselves, well, wait a minute here, we're not salespeople. Right. We're representing the buyer, mm -hmm. not just trying to get the deal done. We have to yeah. say, well, no, 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 let's take a step back because... That gets tough after the 15th home. After yeah. It does get tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a part of you just wants to close them. We have no, we have no more choices, sir. This is it. No, this is it. Okay. This is the one. Yeah. Like this one or that one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one's sold. Yeah. Other than that. Remember when we used to have people like, remember Lyle Skinner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Flying around the corner in his white SUV saying, yeah. I'll take that one. I'll exactly. Take that one. You need a little bit of Lyle in your sales business now. See if it can work. <laughs> If you live or own property along the coast of South Carolina, you probably need insurance. We Insure Advocates is a locally owned independent agency with industry leading service support. Our team of customer centric agents can explain your coverage options and help you craft an insurance program that fits your needs and budget. Data driven for better value, people led for better service. That's the difference of we. For all of your property insurance needs, please find us at weinsureadvocates.com or call us at 843-491-6990. That's interesting. Like, I don't know if you know, if you know the name Jared James? Yes. You guys, I don't know, Matt, if you've studied him. I know Graham lists his yeah. stuff. So. This is one of my favorite things that he says, and you'll love this based on what our conversation is. Visibility trumps ability. 100%. In mm -hmm. our business. 100%. And you can be not so good at what you do, certainly not the level of quality of salespeople that you two are, but if they don't know you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that's I think that's been the big EXP thing. And the, some of these companies that have blown up, mm -hmm. they do an incredible job of being there that's like right. every time you turn over the leaf i mean that's why you're doing the videos right you do your yes. little you're trying mm -hmm. to get on tiktok you're trying to get on instagram that's right. Absolutely. and i do i do three videos every week i send six thousand people and i know they're tired of it but when they choose i want them to know i'm, I'm there that's I'm right. there. 
That's right. And yeah. I might not be the best, but guess what? I'm going to be the most visible. And that's marketing, I think. That's it. it and is. you're learning that, right? That's yes. a, that is that's a very wise Good thing you learned it in 18 months because there's some people, there's there's realtors in this on this call right now that are probably don't know that and they've been doing it for years. Yeah, well, we're um, still working on it. I mean, we talk about it every morning. Graham and I get together uh, and we have a meeting every single morning. Generally, it's the three of us, um, mm-hmm. but um, every meeting it's like we get together, uh, talk about marketing, talk about our backlog, talk about what we're going to do that day, talk about what we're going to do the following week and the next week and the next week. Yeah, and, yeah. And um, just following through. But it's definitely something that we're always striving to get better with. In fact, we had a conversation on the way over here um, because we, there's a particular neighborhood that we we market a bunch, um, and we've been able to get a lot of listings there. And one came up today, and we thought, how do we miss that one? Right. Do they even know about us? Right. You know what can we do to make sure? Like if they knew about us, that's okay. If yeah. We missed it, make sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. But if they didn't know us. It's not acceptable. Right. right. That's yeah. our fault. And and. Uh, uh, you know, what can we do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? And it really does energize us. It says, okay, mm-hmm. let's refocus, let's refocus. Yeah. And so we look at those as, okay, that's fine. We're, we're going to get the next one. That's we're right. Gonna, it's the, the reason one. that we're gra- we gravitate towards repeat referral mm-hmm. because they, it gets rid of this mystery. Although I, you know, I'm blown away by the statistic that 90% of customers said they'd choose their realtor again. And, only like 10% of them remember who they are. Yeah. <laughs> because I, we, we talk about this all the time. Like you have to have good client care f- follow up after the. Yes. I mean, my opinion, this is my opinion. If you go to the closing table with someone that you like, I mean, if you don't like them, you might want to never work with them again. Yeah. You go to the closing table with somebody that you like. If they ever choose anyone else to do business with, you've done, you've, you've messed up. That's right. I mean, think about all the leads. I don't know if you guys are paying for a lead source or what you're doing, but all the leads that come across our desks here, I ask our agents, I'm like, has that person ever bought or sold real estate in their whole life before? If they have, their realtor dropped the ball. That's right. percent. Even if it's just, they might say, oh, well, they were in California when they did that. Well, they should have made a referral. And that is some advice I would give to on-site agents that if you're ever thinking about making the transition, these relationships, whether they, they have a buyer's representation or not, are so critical to maintain and to yeah. and to uh, even after a year after they've closed, just to check in with them because you just never know that when in, it happened when we made that that first step in January of 2022, the very first listing we got was uh, a lady by the name of Teresa, mm-hmm. and her brother uh, was a property owner and. Uh, they knew we were making this change and gave us that first listing. Mm-hmm. And from that first listing, not only did we sell her home, she bought a That's brand right. new home mm-hmm. and it just was a nice beginning, but it was just, it was because of Pete, her brother, mm-hmm. you know, knew and we started telling people and, you know, you have to make sure people know. You have to let people know what yep. you're doing and Absolutely. what your plans are, and they will give you a chance. So here's a hard question. When's the last time you talked to Pete or Teresa? That's a great question. I actually talked to her. With, it's been within 30 days because she, she reached out. Uh, we, we have this follow-up system where yeah. we're – you know, it's it's nice because you know smart drips and all that. Kind of set and forget yeah. it, but it, yeah. it looks it, like it's coming from you. Kind correct. Of it yeah. checks in on them about a year after they've they've closed. It's a year long program, and it and and the final one was something to the effect of if you're ever thinking about selling, and she, you know, you get the text. And yeah. say, oh, oh, Graham, no, I'm I love it. I'm super yeah. happy, and it gives you a chance to to reach back out. Oh, that's great, thinking of you, and and that that's um, another thing is smart drips are important. I mean, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. you know, we have we have a year number two worked out now as well. Yeah, you know, um, for the property owners, yeah, it's a you know the set it and forget it uh, program. Yeah, a program that will text them mm-hmm, mm-hmm, an email mm-hmm. and then remind you to call them. That's and, exactly right. And we even have somebody uh, that's helping us because you know. Once you get busy, it's tough. I can see why people don't. Oh yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, lose contact with people because you're tough. You're pu- it's you got too pull- much. Yeah. You got you too lot. many things going on. You get pulled in a hundred different directions. You got to focus on now. And, um, but we have somebody that is 
is is managing our property owners. You know, right now we're starting with that spreadsheet. Like this yeah. is there's nothing more important in my view for our future than this property owners sheet. And then we need it updated with birthdays when their close date yeah, was, with anniversaries, mm-hmm. with important dates to them. Uh, and ultimately, then we're, you know, uh, told to follow up with them. Hey, guys, right. it's time for you. You know, a note comes across our desk. time for you to call Teresa. Not know? to be the dead horse, but, but a lot of people, I think a lot of realtors, um, once a home closes, they think, oh, I don't need to touch base with them for a couple of years. They're going to be there for a while. Right. But what happens, life happens. Things change. People die. People get divorced. Things right. happen. We've COVID. had it. COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah, we've had it happen to us several times where someone just closed. They get a job transfer. Right. Someone right. died. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and we were there to help resell the home that we just yeah. sold them yeah. within a few months. Yeah. You know, that's it's, important because you don't ever know. We who knows when somebody. I mean, they say the average is every five years they do it. But if you go by the average, you will be average. That's right. And we're not interested in that. I mean, we're interested in being better than that. So there, this is why we hired early on, we hired a director of happiness. Yeah. This is why we don't miss a birthday and anniversary. We know things about people. Confetti is our, is our king around here. Yeah. I mean, people just are. And with our clients, for Mandy and I, our clients are our agents. But we, we talk to agents about make your clients that way. Yeah. Unless you want to spend money your whole life on getting new people, I'm just not interested. I'd rather I'd rather go to the table. I mean, it's Jared James says this too. You're, you know, what's an average closing going to earn us these days between six and twelve thousand dollars or something, right? Mm-hmm. Jared James says the lifetime of that person is worth a hundred thousand dollars more than that. That's right. In the transactions that they'll do over time, and yet we he does this cool thing with the reverse funnel. If you've ever, it's called the bow tie. I've seen you've seen that. that? Where he talks about we, most people will start with the funnel like we're used to, pour the leads in, and get to the transaction. That's the that's the middle of the bow tie. Right. But he says we need to focus on the other side of the bow tie more. Can what do you do with that client after he, they've closed? What do you do? Like we spend so much money and time and effort to get them to the table, but then it's like we leave them and they're already your. I mean, they already like know and trust you. Why that's would right. you walk away? So here you are, eighteen months in. You're gonna you got years ahead of you. Amazing stuff coming up. Um, I want, we got to get back on the episode on the show one day and talk something specific about real estate because you guys know so much and I think you could really shed some light on some things. Um, but I wanted to ask you guys a question. I ask all of our guests this, what is your superpower? Like if you had to say one thing that Matt can do or Graham can do that you feel like you're gifted to do, and that's just you. I know it's awkward talking about yourself, but Everybody has to do it. So what is it? Or you tell each other's if you want to. I don't care. Oh, I'll guys. go with Graham. <laughs> Gr- Graham is, um, he's really good with people and in social environments, you know, whereas I'll kind of shy away from a lot of that stuff. I mean, I will attend them, you know, but Graham's definitely, he could run for mayor. You know? Right. <laughs> I he, agree with that. <laughs> he's on the welcoming committee at his church. You know, he shakes a lot of hands. Yep. He's used to it. He wants to go like I, like on the way over here. We had to drop my my son forgot his credit card and it, he's working over at the factory stores and um and so he wanted to get lunch he could for his break and so he didn't have anything you know so we dropped by there and Graham's like oh run inside like he wants to run inside and just meet everybody <laughs> even though you know the matter is my son or whatever like yeah. all right go ahead yeah but that's Graham's um that's why you see him on camera the most you know because yeah, yeah. You know, that's his deal yes and and uh, it's funny because I did take a personality test Mm -hmm. you know with these big builders and big corporations you have to take these tests and and it came back for me campaign manager Uh, yeah it's a good good fit (laughs) good fit (laughs) i said oh really campaign manager you know oh gosh hey you know what came back for me because i had to do this i was something i ended up with a psychology degree rain rain no what came up with me was plumber a plumber? Yeah. Okay. Which wow. I probably should have went that route. <laughs> a lot of no, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you can um, make a lot of money. So yeah. I tell my son. Yeah. So it, what, what's Matt's? Do you want him to tell his or you want to tell his? I'll tell Matt's. Okay. Matt, Matt's is uh, the focus on a goal and accomplishing that goal. If, if Matt yeah. has a task, it's going to get done. It's going to get done well. Uh, these customers that we have... 
where I am, I would say I am better at the, 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 the welcome part of it. The front end, Matt is, there's no better person that I would feel confident that is going to take care of a customer once he's with them all the way to the finish line and problem solving. If there is any, any, uh, uh, opportunity or challenge that comes up, it's going to get taken care of. It's going to get taken care of the best it possibly could be. And they always so. seem to come up like when you're at the pool with your daughter. Of course. Or, you know, yes. The worst yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, those two things that you just said about Matt and I agree a hundred percent, they, they go hand in hand. I mean, for someone to be uh, not a quitter yeah. and, a, and focused on getting something done, they have to overcome obstacles. Yes. That's just what, that's part of the program. Mm. In order not to quit, you got to do that. Yes. And I would agree with you too. I mean, I remember I was taught a long time ago that if you see somebody with a Cleveland Indians hat on, you say, "Hey, you from Cleveland?" Yeah. You know, I learned that from you because yeah. I remember watching him. And even, I mean, probably yesterday you did the same thing. But you can relate to people like they're part of your family. It's mm-hmm. really cool. And the reason I ask that question, people look at me like, "Why do you ask that?" Well, in my opinion, you need to know your superpower so you can go do that. Yes, because not everybody on this team is gifted with that like you are, Matt. If you went away, the team would be a little bit aimless. Let's be honest, yes. right? And if you went away, the team would be a little bit boring. It wouldn't be able to connect. <laughs> That's true. I don't know what Ivy does, but might not be able to connect to people. That's and, right. and both parts of it are yeah. important. My wife and I couldn't be any more different. Yeah, I mean, she's a total introvert and uh, very smart business mind, and I'm an extrovert and pretty dumb. So yeah. we go. I mean, I think the whole team needs to be uh, aware, and the listeners need to find your superpower. I mean, you weren't given these things, these gifts and abilities to let them sit in the closet not doing something. I mean, go make the world better is my the way I look at it. Tell me a book, a great book. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. What's good books you guys have read that would help our? It doesn't have to be business related. It can be the Notebook if you liked. Well, Nicholas Sparks. I, don't I mean, I'm and Ted. You might know this, but I uh, love to read. Yes, so do. it was hard. You know, I knew you were going to ask this question. I mean, it's so hard to to pick one book. So I just kind of went back to the beginning. And really, what helped change me uh, was an author by the name of Jim Rohn, and and he uh, wrote this one book called "Leading an Inspired Life," and it's short little chapters of 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 stories that get a great point across, but he led me all the way back to, you know, think and grow rich with uh, Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. And, and then ultimately those guys pointed me back to uh, really the Bible, because I believe this now that all of these books, all of these self-help books and, and real estate books that have good principles and points there, they got them from the Bible, right. you know, it's, right. it's all there, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, um, but, uh, but it started with, with, with Jim and his book and his stuff. And I mean, it's just wonderful. You know? Yeah. That's a unique quality for a social extrovert to be a voracious reader. Yeah. Those are kind of like, I would expect Matt and his, Superpower, he would be the voracious reader, but I mm. bet he's not compared to compared to this guy. I mean, he yeah. could, well, so have you got a good one that you? That you I like? mean, you know, it seems like every time I try to read a book, within five minutes, I'm asleep. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Which is a good way to go to sleep. Exactly. But, you know, the one that comes to mind because I get kind of kind of kind of caught off guard here, but there's a book called Alive. Okay. And it is about it has nothing to do with real estate. Good. I love it. But it's about the it was a Chilean soccer team that were young guys and they crashed oh, yes. in the Andes. There was a movie. That's oh, weird. Yeah. I haven't read that mm-hmm. book, but I saw that movie. Yeah. So this book, and I can't remember the author, but I'm sure you can find it. Yeah. But um, I remember reading this book and I've read it a couple of times, but I read it when I was probably 19, 20 years old. That's, you know, it's a pretty old book, but it's a book of survival and mm-hmm. what they had to do to overcome these obstacles that they were presented with. Real, real obstacles, real. Yes. Yeah, we think about what we deal with. Right. Pff, these guys overcame obstacles that none of us ever could even imagine. So right. if you ever get a chance, that's a good book. It's okay. a good read. Yeah. And it'll, it'll, it'll change your way of thinking a little bit. I love that. Never had that one on the show, so that's awesome. Yeah. I've had the other ones. Uh, and I, my last guest actually ended up the same thing, said the Bible was her la- the last thing she said, which was pretty cool. But I'm going to look that one up alive by... 
uh, whoever it's by. Yeah, Matt's, I think Matt's his name book. is Pierre something. I can't remember. Makes our yeah. problems. Yeah. And that's interesting to read. I probably need to get my, my older son to read that because he, you really don't face adversity like that. We mm-hmm. think we do. Yeah. And we've been through hard things. I'm not saying that people are listening or you guys haven't been through tough stuff, but that's one thing I love about Remax. Like, I'm, this is not a Remax commercial, but the founder, Dave and Gail Lineker, uh, Gail Lineker survived a plane crash. Mm, I didn't realize it. So every time she comes on the stage, still in a wheelchair from, mm. I don't know, 40 years ago when she had the plane crash, wow. I stand up and clap. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm like, listen, if you've survived a plane crash, you deserve to be listened to. Yeah. Same with that book. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So as we wrap up, um, so your your company is called Living South Realty. That's right? correct. And you can find you guys on all the social media channels, I'm sure. you got to look correct. at Graham's videos. Yeah. Uh, you got to find him out there. So I'm hoping this will increase everybody's network and they'll they'll reach out to you. Um, Graham Nelson, Matt Ganger. I'll have your, the way you spell your names and stuff in the show notes. Um, but to close, I want you to tell me the name of the podcast is Rise Up. The reason I thought of this, I don't know, three years ago was I think there's a lot of mediocrity in the world. And I'm just trying to figure out what can we do every day to rise above it a tiny bit. Mm-hmm. Is there something that you do in your daily lives that you do that helps you rise above the, the fray? Because you're obviously not mediocre, guys. Everything you touch has been successful. Well, most. Um, what is it that you guys do? I mean, I, I like to, as soon as I hit the office, I like to make a list of exactly what I'm going to do that day. Okay. Um, it's just a little things, but my mind will just, I'll get scattered if not. Yeah. But it's nice to have a checklist. You know, not everything on that checklist can be accomplished that day. Sometimes I have to move some items over. But that way, it's a clear focus on what I'm going to do that day. And even if you, if I don't go in the office, I still want to make a list like that. Yeah. Yeah. Man. That was the focus guy that talked about being focused, by the way. That was Matt. Graham, what's right. yours? <laughs> I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to yeah. go Hey, Graham likes to dance. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, what is it for you, buddy? Really is, is, you know, part of my daily routine. You know, I got a little routine I do in the morning right when I get up. But I look at one of the apps I look at is Time Hop, and it, it okay. shows you like what happened a year ago, what's either on social media and your feeds and in your pictures, it has access to all these things, okay. but it just helps you remember how fast time goes by and to appreciate the moments that we're in now. And time is fleeting. Mm-hmm. It is moving very fast and that we get to do this. I mean, even what we're doing now and, in and uh, whatever field you're in, but especially real estate, I mean, it is an, an honor and a privilege to be able to do what we're doing and get the opportunity to be a good human and mm-hmm. do the mm-hmm. right thing. And, mm-hmm. and you get to make that choice and, and, uh, uh, and to be thankful, you know, just to have that recognition. We get to do this. We could be, you know, it could be a lot worse. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, let's go out and help somebody, you know. That's right. Yeah, it's cool. So you've got, I got two guys sitting here. I know we don't have Ivy, but you guys are running uh, this company. And it's interesting to me that one of you just you make a good team because one of you just said, I'm going to look at the past. Mm-hmm. And one said, I'm focused clearly on the future. And I think that gratitude and that focus is going to get you guys much success in the future. I'm excited for you and looking forward to big things for Living South Realty. That's Thank right. Coming well, up, we you. appreciate you guys being on the show. It's been fun to talk. I can't believe we've gone 41 minutes. It's wow. probably my longest, wow. longest we, episode. You know, we like to say, it's a good life. Living South. Thanks, guys. Well, hey, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for listening to Rise Up in Real Estate. If you liked hanging out with us today, please find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Rise Up in Real Estate. Also, Follow us right now on your favorite podcast host to hear more episodes. We really appreciate you spending some of your time with us. And until next time, let's do each other a favor and all help each other rise up.